Hey everybody, this is Andrew Embler, CTO of Portland Labs and Concrete Core Team Leader. Today I want to show off one of the new features of the upcoming Concrete version 9, containers. In Concrete, as you're probably aware, we publish pages by putting content blocks into areas. Over the years, we've added tools to make it possible to subdivide these areas, like custom layouts and grid layouts. This is an example of a grid layout. Here you can see we've got our Twitter bootstrap grid cutting this entire area into three separate columns. These tools solve the problem of taking a larger area and turning them into two or smaller ones, but that's pretty much all they do. For example, all you can really get out of this is the standard bootstrap responsive behavior where things collapse on the smallest possible viewport. That's pretty nice to keep things responsive, but if you want more control, there's no way to get it through these layouts. In a 5.7 point release, we added some layout preset functionality, but these are really just ways to take some common layouts that you use and easily access them. For example, we ship with left sidebar and right sidebar in our elemental theme, and it makes it easy to cut a container into two separate layouts, one with the left sidebar and one with the right sidebar, but that's pretty much what it does. There's no way to add multiple sections within a single layout. There's no way to add uh, different rows on top of rows, that kind of thing. You're really just limited to a single row with some different areas in some different columns. It's safe to say the web has changed a lot, even in the seven short years since 5.7 has been released. The design of pages isn't so rigid. Instead, you really want to give developers and site editors the ability to craft sections of content that can easily be repurposed across different pages. In Concrete, you can easily do this with block types, but then you end up with a thousand different bespoke block types on your site, all with slightly different purposes, each of which has to be documented, and each of which is specifically locked just to the functionality that you build into that block type. Why can't we just have reusable block types, but for areas and sections of a page instead of just for blocks? That's exactly what we're adding with containers in version 9. This is the design for our new ConcreteCMS.com case studies section. You see this top up here? We have a two column layout with an image on the left and content on the right. Now check out this design. See the top? We have a similar two column layout, but the columns are different. The image is a bit smaller and this content is larger. We also have some flexbox behaviors here because we have this right title here vertically aligns to the middle of the image on the left. So right out of the gate, you're not gonna get this behavior if you just use a layout. Finally, check out this design. This is the homepage for the new concretecms.org. Up here we have an image slider and here we have a gallery. These are all full width, uh, full width blocks. So that will work just fine. But in here we have this blue container with custom styling, and then we have content at the top. We have a testimonials block. We have a horizontal rule. If you wanted to get this type of behavior, you would need to have some kind of crazy custom block, or you'd need to have an area with custom styles or some kind of area built into a homepage template, which means you would always have to have this area and support it. We could accomplish this with layouts, but then you have to know and understand how to add custom classes to area layouts. You have to mess around with custom layouts that are a single column or with the custom block types. Containers actually make this much, much easier. We break up these content chunks into sections of HTML and PHP that themselves define areas, and then we can add those sections to different areas, one right after another, just like they were block types. We can even nest containers inside each other. Here's where containers are defined. They can come with themes, be installed with themes or packages, or you can add them yourself just through the UI up here. Creating a container is as simple as giving it a name, choosing an icon, and giving it a handle. The handle, much like with page templates or block templates, references where in the theme's actual directory the template file for that container lives. Here is the masthead left image with text container that we're using. Here's the handle. That's going to map to a container template that we're going to see shortly. And here 
is an icon. And here we have our masthead left image text container template. If you have experience with concrete page templates or block templates, this is probably looking pretty familiar to you. But what's really great about this is you can put any kind of HTML into this. You don't need to put in certain classes or even certain tags. It's really dictated to how you've structured your theme. If you want to use a section class for this that, or a section tag for this, that works really well. Here we're using bootstrap containers but we're also using our own custom class like container masthead image text, which we're using to add additional padding to these things. Um, you can see we've got certain responsive classes and we've got certain classes that add padding, but only under certain responsive conditions. And then finally, the container area class, which is automatically available if you, you have this use statement in your template, and uh, the container object and the current page object C, which are also automatically available in this template, using those things together is all you need to do to create an area within your container. It should be pretty familiar to you if you've used concrete page templates before. Here's an example of the feature list section container. It adds a title above the item list, which is great because it lets us do some special styles for titles that are added to this feature list section spot. And then it even clues the editors into special templates they should use if they're in edit mode. So you, you can really treat these a lot like you treat page templates. Finally, now that you've seen the templates for these containers, let's add a couple of them to the page. Here's an empty page. This is our new version 9 editing experience. You just select containers from this left-hand panel. And let's choose one of these masthead containers for our page header. Next, let's add the feature list container. This is giving us everything we need to make this page stand out without having to hack together a bunch of custom bespoke templates. I hope this video has been useful to you. We're really excited about all the new things coming to you in Concrete version 9. Stay tuned for more, and thanks for watching.